There's a difference to be in the house of God because you're afraid of hell. Because it is possible to be here, not because you love God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but because you're afraid to burn in hell. Is that true? Yes. I can tell you, I can tell you that it is possible that people can come to church, not because they, they love God, but because there's a coronavirus happening out there. <laughs> <laughs> I know you may not want to say amen, but you know <laughs> it is possible to love to be in the house of God for all wrong reasons. Yes. Just like you can pray to God for wrong reasons. Yes. There are people who pray because they want things from God. Yes. But you see, if you move away from praying to God because you want Him to bless you, you want Him to yeah. heal you, you want him to give you a child, you want him to fix your husband or to fix your wife. When you move away from that and say, My first motive is to love God because I love Him, Amen. that will fix everything. Amen. Because if it's okay up here, the conduit and the pipe is right for you to give it there. Because truth is, I cannot give to Shelly what I don't have. That's right. Huh? So the reason why therefore we say husbands should lead the families spiritually. Amen. And by being spiritual does not mean they have to be as emotional as your women are. Because Jesus. the truth is they are emotional. And God made them that way. Amen. Glory. Spiritual action. It's not me forcing you to behave like your wife, but it's me telling, making sure you understand what action is all about. Because to be the head does not mean you are a dictator. No. This is a good thing. Yeah, this one's free. This one's free. Come on, come on. We're building this year. What are we doing this year? Let's build it. 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 Because when you are a husband, I often say, quoting what Dr. Mars Munro said, the late, he said, being the head, according to the Bible, it is because the eyes are in the head, which means sense of direction, where we are going with our family, comes from me. This is where we are going, because eyes are part of the head. Come on. Being the head, it means um, ears are part of the head. My wife is coming. Are you okay? Hello. <laughs>
What did Jesus do? Jesus just did something very, very important. He took the 613 loaves and he put them together. Like I've said, like macaroni, he put them together and then he brought them. After he brought them, he put them in one pot and then he, uh, he began to put in the fire just under the pot there and he began to cook and he started stirring that pot and stirring that pot and stirring the pot. He's trying to say something to this lawyer that the greatest commandment in the ways of God is not don't do this. Mm. Yeah. That's what he said. Because don't do this. Don't kill. Don't murder. Don't commit adultery. He says, I can give you one law that can actually kill all the 613. So he says, here's one law. Love God. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Because the truth is, if I love God, it will be hard for me to murder. Mm. Because I love her. I said I love her. Right? And because she's my wife and because I love her. The words that I said on the wedding day that I loved her. It becomes very difficult when it comes in the marriage context. But I want to see the principle is the same. Because usually what we do as men. When you wanted to have extra marital affairs, you remove your wedding ring. You remove the wedding ring because you don't want the other. No. But all, no, don't worry, in the 21st century right now, you can commit adultery with your own. That's how desperate they are. Let's talk. Come on, come on, let's talk. I know this one is not one of those that have a gosh. Jesus, we love you. Let, 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 let's talk. We are family. We are building. So, so it goes for me to say, it's not the ring that makes me not to commit a daughter. It's what I say to her. The vows I say to her. So, you learn it as you go along the way. Here's what God says to you. Let me fix it right for you here. Lawyer, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. In other words, it has to be vertical first. If you fix it on a vertical position, it will be easier for you to go horizontal. Now watch what he says in the next verse. Verse 38, you know, this is the first and great commandment. Am I right? He says, it's the first and great commandment. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot love them before you love him. It doesn't work. It has to be him first. Because he's the only one who is love. That's why we talk about God. God has no love. God is love. Yeah? The Greeks have now broken it into four categories. And they spoke about the Eros love, which is romantic love. And they spoke about stonger love, which is brotherly love. They talk about the filial love, which is friendship love. But then there is agape love for, which is the God's kind of love. When you enter marriage, God does not want you to enter erotically. He does not want you to enter stoically. He wants you to enter agape. Because when you've got agape, you can continue with these other three. Because agape is the foundation of the other three. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love him with all your heart and love him with all your soul. For this is the first and the great commandment. Verse 39. Watch what it says, verse 39. It says that, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. I'm talking to your neighbor today. Uh, your wife is your neighbor. Your fellow Christian, if you're single, is your neighbor. Mm -hmm. If this church is going to be a church of the difference, we need to eradicate any spirit that will try to rise up to presume I am better than you because I'm yes. gifted better than you because and therefore I can do this better than you because mm -hmm. in destiny we don't tolerate that mm -hmm. we are guided by love mm -hmm. our love for God and our love for each other mm -hmm. people come in the house of God with their baggage and we all do mm -hmm. and uh, when you look beyond the baggage of people <laughs> And you begin to look at them with the eyes of love. 
you will love them despite. Yes. 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 So, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So, one of the key therefore elements I want to dwell on right now before we pray for one another, it is the element that deals with the categories of apology. He has called them the five love languages. The five love languages of apology. And uh, did a very good job on them. And uh, this comes forth together with uh, one of the professors, uh, Jennifer Thompson. And when I wrote this one together, and I felt this was very, very good for you and I to understand. So, the foundational text for our lives, we now know the first and the greatest commandment is to love God. I love God and I maintain the spiritual climate in my own personal life and therefore I'll be able to love someone. So whether you are single or you are divorced or you are separated, the truth remains the same. You can only move forward in loving others after you have known what is it to love God. Because love is from God and therefore when it is inside of you, you will see what God can do even of your life in Jesus' mighty name. In Isaiah 59 and verse 2, it says these words. You can write it down. Jesus says, uh, it is, uh, through Isaiah, uh, he says in Isaiah chapter 59, it is, he says, the, your sins or your iniquities they have separated you with your God. That's Isaiah 59 and verse 2. It says, it is your iniquities, it is your sins that has separated you with your God. I want to flow with me you know, as we go in Isaiah 59 and verse 2. Let them see that. And as we see that, you, you begin to realize, therefore, that it is important how I live my life as it pertains to God yes. and how I live my life as I connect with everybody else. So, he says that, but your iniquities have separated you from your God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. And I'm sure you agree with me that uh, what causes friction, miscommunication, and uh, some of the conflicts that we encounter, even between us, either as husband and wife, spouses, or as brothers and sisters, or as children and their parents, you'll find that all with us here as a church of Jesus Christ between ourselves. It is the same principle. Your sins or your iniquities separate you even from one another. But the truth is, if I know I've got something that I have against you, when I'm coming to the house of God, Definitely, I make sure that I sit categorically far away from her. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I know that if I know that I did it, she will upset me about something or she said a word that I felt I was offended by. If I don't handle the whole thing of apology and forgiveness properly, we can have a church here that is full of people that are not talking to one another. Yeah. And you see, church has made it so well. That uh, we find it easy to go to God. That's why we make statements. Yeah. As long as I know me and God are cool. I don't care. I don't care what you think about me. I don't care. No, rubbish. That's not right. That's not right. You should care. Yeah. Because that's why we are called the church. Yeah. It's never God's way of operating. That you and I should live our lives thinking, me plus Jesus, that's all that I need. Yeah. You need one another. And we need each other. Somebody shout amen. amen. Matthew 5, verse 23. I think it's Jesus Christ quoting there. He says, If anyone is put against you, if you know that there's something there, he says, Don't continue sacrificing the offerings. You know that verse? He says, Leave your gift on the altar. Go out and be good time. I'm pretty sure if we're to practice that in the church, I don't know who will remain in this church. Because, because. People get wounded along the way until they build their own defense walls that become unhealthy. But I pray that this morning, by God's grace, we can be able to overcome that as we walk with God in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. amen. Where do we learn how to apologize? Most probably for the most majority of us, we learn it from home, don't you? Yeah? And we, it says, little Johnny uh, with his sister Melissa. And uh, Melissa's walking in front, and little Johnny pushes Melissa, and Melissa kicks yeah. down on the ground, then falls, and to be just crying. And of just as good mothers or fathers do the same. Johnny, uh -uh. go and say sorry. Of course, Johnny goes and say to Melissa, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> now I want to picture. Johnny is steady. Johnny is married. Mm. 
does something very bad to his wife. What is Johnny going to say? I'm sorry. But he stops right there. Oftentimes, he doesn't cut it in marriage. You're sorry? You better be sorry. I thought so. You better be sorry. Yes, you're sorry. But there's more to be sorry that you can do, that you need to do. So I want us to look at that right now because statistics already show, here we go again, men, uh, that uh, the most people that find it difficult to say sorry are men. Yeah. Uh, I can talk about us because if yeah. I'm a man. They find it difficult to say sorry because oftentimes culture has built this thing around us that that's been girlish. What are you saying sorry for? And that has penetrated into our marriages, into our families. And it's causing marriages that have almost, it's like two people who are living together but separated. <laughs> so, where do we take it from there? So let me give you right now, number one, if we're going to apologize, I'm going to give you this, uh, these ones here, the points that are in the letter five of the number one, expressing regret. Expressing regret. Johnny saying to the sister, I'm sorry, did it at three, but Johnny didn't mean it. Amen. But because mama forced me to say I'm sorry. I'll make sure that when I grow up and I've got my own family, I find it hard. And I've got to, I'll be the first to say to you, to all those that grew up as well in my generation, I never, I don't remember hearing my father saying sorry to my mom. Maybe he did. Maybe he went away in the bedroom. But when we were traveling together and there was this heated fellowship between them, I've never heard him say, my wife, I'm sorry. But that doesn't matter. My papa is dead. He's not here. I am here. And I'm dealing with you. Let's see that we fix this thing properly. Amen. Expressing regret. Saying I am sorry is not enough. Say what you are sorry for. Right? So, for me, if I know I forgot something, oh honey, I'm sorry that I forgot actually this was our anniversary. I'm sorry. Sorry. Say sorry for what exactly it is. Don't just say sorry, leaving it there. Say sorry, tell her, tell him what you are sorry for. Don't just say sorry because I forgot about our anniversary. But you should have reminded me. Ah, no, no, no. Once, 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 you, once you say but, forget about that sorry. Talk to me, somebody, please. Because that's what we do, though. Eh? So, but honey, I know you told me you put uh, some vegetables on the fire. You know you're not there. You're busy doing the laundry. But you are supposed to remind me. You know I have got a lot of things that I'm doing. You are not sorry when you say that. Say sorry for what you are sorry about and put a full stop. Whenever you say but. It doesn't work anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> you get there. Because that's the thing, isn't it? Sometimes we are quick as men to buy them the bunch of flowers. But I can tell you right now, these women are very smart. <laughs> Can't you just say so? Why are you buying me flowers for? It doesn't work. So let's walk it. Let's walk it. Number one, expressing regret. Telling them what you are sorry about, that's number one. Somebody start amen. amen. <laughs> when you read Luke chapter 15, it's a story about the prodigal son. It will tell you to give you actually a way how to say sorry. When the young man left the house, when he's coming back to his father's house, he says exactly what he, it's like he's reciting it. What is he sitting in the pig pen? He's reciting exactly what he's going to say. That's Luke 15 and verse 21. If you have got it for me there, you get, let's see that we can read it. Number two, not only should you express the regret, saying sorry and telling them what you are sorry about, but number two, accept the responsibility. I, I was wrong. Yes. I've done that quite a few times. I 
I buy a lot of diaries because I write my sermons in diaries. The door my wife bought me an iPad. I see the iPad, but I prefer to write. Because sometimes when I get my revelations from God, I bet when I begin to put looking for where the baby is, the revelation runs away. So when I'm for a pen, I can write faster because I want to make sure that I get everything what God gives me. So my problem with buying diaries is that sometimes I buy them of the same color, and sometimes they're black and then sometimes they're brown. And uh, happened that one day that uh, someone I prepared and I was supposed to go somewhere in the conference to preach, you don't understand. Feel for me. <laughs> so my wife, what she calls order, is disorder to me, especially around my desk. Because if I organize my stuff where I want them to be, it's disorder for her. So she wants to come and clean and wipe and look sure everything's fine. But then she rearranges things, you see. So I'm coming there and I'm looking out for my diary because I'm ready. I've got this hot salmon. I'm not going to preach it. So I say, honey. My diary, my diary, my diary. I'm ready to let my diary, my diary. She says, where did you put it? And said, honey, you are the one who cleaned it just, just now. It was right there. I, 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 I've got to go. I'm late. I, I, I've got to go. And obviously, you know, we don't find the diary. And therefore, my body is raising up right now. Oh, Lord. Oh, please, Lord. So much. Forgive me a wife. Thank you, Lord. Forgive me this woman. I, 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 I can't get it now. But all my, my sons, what am I going to preach right now? And I'm yelling, and I'm yelling, and I'm yelling. The poor girl is busy now, trying also to look there. With that guy is, we're looking everywhere, looking for them, and I'm now sweating. Because I want that guy, I must go and preach to these people. Yes, <laughs> Mimi. <laughs> by the time, by the time I leave the house, I'm now beginning to cook. I have a sermon in my head. And I'm talking all the way. I can't believe this. I, I, I just, just can't believe. This is just the devil. I just the devil. I can't believe this. I, I passed through my office where we were in Africa. And I realized my diary. What's that? Who brought it? Oh! <laughs> Now, I don't know how it's hard for me as a preacher, you see, because I can't pretend. I know that if I'm going to preach, I can't do it before I fix it. Yes. So, I had to make a decision. So I thought, eh? Honey! <laughs> Right. 
I can tell you that many won't like this one. Because every time <coughs> I've apologized to Shelly, Mount Jenny, and I've said, what can I do to make it right? She comes on this crazy idea. Yeah, you need to take me to Bali. You <laughs> see, <laughs> yo, Mike, I thought you would say chocolate. You want, want Bali? <laughs> but you see, when you learn to make restitution, you say, what can I do? You, you, you see that in the restaurants, don't you? When the restaurants that know how, the etiquette of dealing with customers, and they accidentally spill some coffee on you when they're coming in the waiter. Usually the manager comes in and say, we are happy to give you a free meal and we are happy for you to bring this to the dry cleaners and we'll pay for it. It's called making restitution. And I can tell you, rather than you now going back, talking back about the restaurant, you know that no, that's a good restaurant. Because you know all it took for them, even though the waiters did not serve me properly and they did this to my clothing, but the truth is they have given me a hand and they're saying, we are happy to make it right by you. Well, you women, you were supposed to to be smiling at me, not looking at me at this way, because I'm trying to fix your husband's phone. Jesus. Oh, is that the sign? <laughs> number four, number four, I wanted to see something there. Number four, gen genuinely repenting. What that means? Repentance has to do with making a turnaround, as you know, and it's expressing the desire to change. Expressing the desire to change. The next two, verse 38, after Peter preached the gospel, the people that were hearing said to him, What shall we do for us to be saved? And he says to them, Repent that your sins will be forgiven. So it's important that you express that desire to change. How do you change? A story is being told about a husband. Um, they were married and then their baby. And obviously, like babies do, oftentimes you have changed their you have changed their diaper, you have fed them, you have breastfed them, they have slept enough, and then there just comes that moment where they think, I just want to cry. Like I'm gonna cry and nobody's gonna stop me. Yes, I know you changed me, I know you fed me. I know you've given me all the comfort. Yes, I know I'm not even hot. Everything is fine. But I just want to cry. <laughs> Until the husband did not know what to do with his kid. Picked up the kid. Shook the kid. And of course, you know, it doesn't go well with the mother's side. Don't you ever do that. <laughs> Very, very sorry after 30 minutes, he went inside, he knocked on the door, he opened up. Honey, I'm so sorry. I never want to treat our child this way. Please help me. How can you help me? You know, I can never do this thing again. And the wife looked at him and said, Take a walk. <laughs> <laughs> and surely, because he was trying to temper his anger issues, he went away. Come back after an hour, and when he came back, that took a process of time. Each time, when he got angry, when he realized that his temper was rising up, he moved away from the space. Because, ladies and gentlemen, what happens is, whenever there is now a tiff between two of you, the atmosphere, the environment is very toxic. So moving away, it gives you a latitude for you to cool down. But listen to me, men, don't go for the whole night. You cause more problems. You know, oh, yeah, the pastor said I should go away. It's like, <laughs> give you your space. I'll give you your space. Where were you? Oh, I slept at my friend's place. Nah, 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 nah. Just for 30 minutes or an hour. Then you come back. And when you come back, you'll find out how that does to you. Expressing the genuine desire to change. That's genuine repentance. And I want you to see the last one right now there as we pray. And the last one, of course, is ask to be forgiven. 
This one took me time to master. That when you see where we're coming from, number one, expressing regret. Somebody shout that expressing regret. Regret. Say that with me. Shout it. Expressing regret. Expressing regret. Number two, accepting responsibility. Accepting responsibility. Number three, making restitution. Making restitution. Number four, general repentance. Yeah. And number five, ask to be forgiven. Ask to be forgiven. What that means is you don't need to say to her, please, will you forgive me? If you check all the stuff that we have said right now from number one, expressing <coughs> regret, saying, I am sorry, I forgot to take on the laundry outside. That's good. But we move and accept the responsibility. I know you had spoken about this to me. Please, I was wrong. But then you move on now into that category where you begin to realize that I just do not accept the responsibility of the fact that I was wrong. But I also want to make sure that after even I've accepted, I make restitution. And make a restitution depending with whatever, how, how brave and how serious the issue is. Some of those uh, issues may not even that big, big, big. So yeah, chocolate will do. If that's a favorite thing. Bunch of flowers, somebody said here, yeah, will do. If that's a favorite thing. But you're just trying to see that we want to work together. Because we are as a husband and wife and as spouse, spouses want to make sure that we maintain peace in our relationship as we work together. But number four, you genuinely repent. By that I mean, therefore, you are not forever saying sorry over the same mistake that you continue to do. Genuinely repenting, it means I turn around from it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. And because you know, you, you know in, in, in marriages, oftentimes it's just the simple things. Uh, okay, you didn't lift up the lid when you were in the bathroom and you forgot to put it back down. I'm thinking, okay, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I cannot say, can I make it up for you, take you to Bali? Why? Because you just opened it. <laughs> the devil is a liar. It depends with the gravity of, <laughs> of the situation. <laughs> I know the women are both. That's the main thing there in the house. Okay? And you ask to be forgiven. When you ask to be forgiven, you are verbalizing. Please, we do find it in your heart to forgive me. When you do that, you will live in peace and happiness. God bless you. I love you too. <laughs>